OK, today's training video is going to be the second part of the program module for Boy Scout councils. So what we did last time is we built out a program. We discussed the differences and the different types of programs that Boy Scouts use. We went into building the first week of camp using our session tool. We went through building session events or merit badges. We talked about adding merit badge requirements um, in the double nut tool. We talked about facilities, so adding campsites, cabins, um, tent sites, whatever it may be, so your troops can actually select those facilities as part of registration. We also went into the functions of a group program, which is really the key fee the key part of Boy Scout summer camp. So what we're going to do today is kind of do the wrap up here. So we're going to talk about building payment schedules, adding discounts, um, adding additional weeks of camp, and then we're going to review the group registration functions. Again, we're going to review that because there's a lot there and it's really important that you understand those functions and how to best utilize them. So let's go ahead and go into our test environment here and I'm going to go to event management. And under the programs tab, you're going to see my BSA summer camp 2022. So again, last time we were here, we used the new session tool to really build our first week of camp, which is 6.6 to 6.10. So what I again, what I always like to do is really perfect everything before adding my additional weeks of camp. So what, what I mean by that is you want to make sure that you add all of your session events. So if I go into manage session events here, you want to make sure that you add all of your session event groups, all of your merit badges. So everything is perfected at this level. The next thing you want to do is go to your week one, your first session, and make sure that we are collecting everything we want. If you want to assign a form, you want to add a form, make sure you go ahead and add a form. Maybe you want to add your permission, photo release, medical waiver. We can assign that form to this uh, week of camp. Maybe you don't, but you want to make sure you do that before you copy. For, so our first line of business is going to be, let's talk about payment schedules. So usually we see payment schedules in Boy Scout summer camp. The reason being, as I said in our last video, oftentimes BSA summer camp is opened up way in advance of the actual event. So using the features of summer camp, um, you know, the, a lot of times councils will open up and say, I just want the troop leader to come on and pay a deposit, tell me how many scouts, how many adults, and just pay a simple deposit, and then come back in the future, make additional payments, add the scouts' names, and then eventually sign up for merit badges. So payment schedules are usually almost always part of summer camp registration. So if I edit this, what you're gonna see is we can see our prices for summer camp. So we said scouts are 325, and adult leaders are 225. So there's a variety, obviously there's you know, a lot of varieties of different payment schedules. So if I go to payment schedule in the left menu, first thing you see is you can say fixed dates. So if you want to have this is the date that this is due, you can use fixed dates. If you want to use days from the date of registration, you can do that too. So you can say 25 days before, Two, 14 days before the first day of camp, your payment is due. You can do that as well. So it's your choice. A lot of times people do fixed dates because no matter the week, they want the money on this date. If different weeks have different payment schedules, you could use this option from days of registration or activity. It's just, it's your choice. You also can include the session events here. That's not as important here because our cost is at the session level. You can still have some pricing, like it's $5 for basketry merit badge, but the pricing per person is located at the session level. So you don't really need to worry about include session events. You would need to do that again if all your pricing was at the session event level. So let's say add schedule item one. So let's say that, you know, 
if you wanted to just say, I want a flat amount due when you sign up your troop for camp, you can select amount deposit per registration, and that's just a flat deposit of this dollar amount. You all could also could do a percentage of the total registration. So I don't care how many people you sign up, you owe us 25% when you come on and make your initial deposit. So that's what I'll do. I'll say, I'll say hold the spot. See if it lets me. So I'm gonna say hold the spot deposit, and I'm gonna say 25%. And I'm going to click this button at registration because I want them to pay that 25%, the total 25% of their registration when they register. So I'm going to put 25%. Then I'm going to say add schedule item two. So most of what we see here is um, a per, uh, a, usually an amount per scout or adult. So you can say amount per registrant, and it's not gonna look at adult leaders and scouts, your registrant types. So you could say, I wanna say, I'll say payment one is gonna be, you know, $50, and I want that due on March 1st. So what that's going to do is charge you $50 per person on March 1st. You could also break this down. We see this a lot. You could say, well, for scouts, I want $25 due on 3-1-2022. And for the adult leaders, um, payment one, I'm going to say I want, you know, maybe $10 per adult leader that you're signing up. And that's also due on 3-1-2022. This here, let's lower this. I'll say 10%, so it's not as, not as huge. So we can say, so for this schedule, what we're doing is 10% hold a spot deposit at registration. And then on March 1st, I'm, I'm collecting $25 per scout and $10 per adult leader. Then what I'm gonna do, and we see this a lot with Boy Scout Camp, I wanna offer them an incentive. I wanna say basically, if you pay your registration in full by a certain date, I'm gonna offer you a discount. So what I'm gonna do here is say pay in full. And I'm gonna say, I'll call this full payment. And if you meet this full payment, what I'm gonna do is give you a discount per scout. So I'm gonna say, if you do this, I'm gonna give you a $15 discount per scout, an early discount per scout, if you pay in full by 3-15-2022. Next, what I'm gonna do is put my final payment. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'll just call this balance due, and I'm going to set the date for this. So I'm going to say the final payment is due 5-25-2022. Uh, so what you'll see here is a lot of variety, right? You can come in here and pretty much build any kind of payment schedule you desire. I usually tell people don't make it too confusing because Boy Scout Summer Camp is so important to scouts and leaders. And the less questions that the councils receive, the better for you and all your administrators. But the system's built to really handle almost any type of payment schedule. So again, just to review, what we've done is we've done a percentage discount. So at registration, they're going to owe you 10% of the total registration. Then on 3-1, we're collecting $25 per scout and $10 per adult. They're going to, if they pay in full by 315, we're giving them a $15 discount per scout. And then they owe us the balance due on 525. So I'm going to click save. So now once I click save, you'll see on my week one, I have a payment schedule built. So I have a hold the spot deposit, payment one, payment two, full payment by 315, balance due 525. Uh, 2022. So once you have a payment schedule built, 
you can build notifications and we would encourage this. So once you have a payment schedule, the payee can choose to automatically enter their credit card and have it auto built. So that's one option. But you also can enable reminders for those that don't sign up for auto payment. And a lot won't because, you know, the troop leader often has to collect payment for each kid. So you're less likely to have the troop leader to sign up for auto payment. So what reminders enable you to do is have automatic emails go out to the troop leader by the dates that you set here. So this date range pertains to the dates that you've set on the payment schedule. So payment one and two, we have three, one, we have those payments. So it basically says, so you have March 1st as your first payment due. When do you want to send, how many days before, and how many days after do you want to send reminders? And then between that date range, how many days, every three days, every five days, every seven days, whatever it may be, you're going to send these reminder messages. And it basically says, here's your payment reminder. You can build custom uh, payment reminder messages. If you're interested in more details about notifications in the user manual sections, there's a whole article on uh, payment schedules and payment notifications. So please take a look at that. But if you do have a payment schedule, I would encourage you to enable notifications. It just helps you collect your money, sends out those auto emails. So now that we have our payment schedule built, let's go ahead and talk about the discounts. Um, so within the program module, we usually see in the camp in the Boy Scout uh, camp world, we see a lot of discounts based on um, registering types. So if I go to discounts here, for example, and I want to build a discount here, so I can say new discount. So I want to build a discount, and I want that discount to offer like basically a ratio-based discount. So what I can do here is I can build this um, discount. I can say per registrant, or I can say overall. Um, this right here allows me to select um, basically this discount is per registrant of adults or I can say free registrants. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select, I'm going to, let's say we offer a, for every 10 adult leaders, you get one free scout or a dollar off a, your scouts. So let's say, um, So what I'm going to do here is say for every 10 scouts, I'm going to give one free adult leader. Now you can make this an automatic discount or you can enter a discount code and it will apply that um, discount based on a code. Usually for these ratio type discounts, it's usually automatic. So in the leader's guide, it will usually say something like, hey, if you if you sign up 10 adults, we're going to give you for every 10 adult for every 10 scouts you sign up, we're going to give you one free adult leader. So if I click add here, what you'll see is my summer camp 2022 adult leader discount, one free adult leader registrant for every 10 scout registrants. So it's going to give me that discount automatically when I sign up my my 10 scouts. Another one we see often is just um, some like not like scholarships. People will sign up for scholarships in ahead of time and then the the council will give the adult leaders discount codes for those scouts that need some financial assistance for camp. So if you do that, one option is to actually the discount can be, you know, Joe Scouter financial aid, I'll say, if I could type. Then what we can do is we can simply just give a discount amount. So Joe Scouter applied for a scholarship and we're gonna give Joe Scouter a $50 discount, but we want for a code. So we can say JS50. So we can build that code and what what you really would want to do is probably mark this one time use 
So this code can only be used one time, literally one time. And then you can hand those codes out to the adult leader for that troop. And when that troop leader goes on to register, he can enter that code. So Joe Scouter gets that financial aid towards the camp bill. So that's most of the discounts we see is usually like a ratio based discount or a discount code used for Boy Scout camp. If you have other types of discounts, uh, we encourage you to reach out to our support team. So if you can't really figure out how to fit it, it's not unusual. A lot of times, even um, even, even as the support team, you know, we it, there's a lot of options in building a discount. So kind of fool around with it, play around with the setup. And if you can't, if you get stuck or have a question, reach out to the support team and they can help you set that up or tell you, sorry, we can't set that up, whatever it may be. Uh, but we encourage you to reach out to them again. If you do reach out to the support team, just give them all the details, you know, where that the program name, the session, exactly what type of discount you're trying to build, um, and they'll be able to help out. So what we've got so far is we have added our payment schedule. We've added discounts, and now I'm going to talk about building additional weeks of camp. So let's talk about from the from the outside here. So we built our program. And we've built a group sign up program and I've set the dates really six, six to seven, eight. And so I've come by building this, I've told the system, this is really the effective end date of all of my weeks of camp combined. And then what I did is I built my new session and my new session is summer camp 2022 week one. So if I go in here, this is, I have a unique URL, a unique sign up for week one of camp. And I've said, this is the start and end date, end date of week one. Week one has its own capacity, its own start and end date, its own modify until date. Everything is set for week one. Now, once I have perfected week one, I've assigned my forms, I've added my payment schedules, I've set my discounts. I've built, if I want to put participant instructions, whatever it being be, I want to make sure that week one is perfect. What I can then do is use this new session option to build my additional weeks of camp. So if I say new session, what you see, it, it uses week one as a template. So I can just change this to week two. I can set the dates here. So if I want to say week one was the, was the, uh, the 6th, I think through the 10th, I'll say this is the 13th. And the end of the week that week is going to be the 17th. I'm not going to set a time here because I set time on my session events. But if I wanted to, I could set different dates here. I'm not going to, but if, if you wanted to extend the end date for week two for whatever reason, if you said, you know, week two, we have a little less capacity, you can do that. You can have a different update until date for week two. If you want to extend that past 525, you can have a different deposit payments into for week two if you so choose. But I'm just gonna say save. So now that I say save, you'll see now I'm on week two and it's copied my form schedule, my payment schedule, as well as my discount. So everything is copied down. What you'll also notice is my session events. Those have copied down and set the dates appropriately. So they've it's copied down based on my previous dates that I set for week one. And if I say done here, so here we go. Here's week one, here's week two. And again, if I wanna add new weeks, I just say new session. I can set my dates here. So once you perfect week one, it's really simple just to build out all your additional weeks of camp. And that's why I kind of stress, take your time, build out week one, perfect it, and then worry about week two. So again, I can come here, I have the option to change dates for week three. Um, let me change that to week three. I have the ability to change my dates. I could even change pricing, whatever it is. And I can say save. And again, everything will copy down. And again, my dates or my session events will copy down appropriately based on what I did for week one.
So if I come back here, here are all my weeks of camp. Now, if I select a week, I have individual URLs to those camp weeks. So you can direct people directly to week one, week two, week three of camp. You also are given these URLs. So you have two options. One URL includes facility usage, which basically says which campsites have been used. So there is a thing in the Boy Scout world where people come to camp, but based on what campsites or what cabins are available will determine what week they attend. So you can actually have a URL that displays facility usage or excludes it. So if we take this, for example, let me copy this URL. When we come in here and I say. See if that works. You'll see here that we have a, a URL that displays each week of camp. You'll see here that I have uh, if I select this more here, it's going to show me each of my facilities, the space available and the space used. So again, a lot of times troop leaders will will actually choose their camp week based on what facility is available. You know, every year they come and they take cabin three. It's a great cabin. It has a great view. It's near the dining hall. They want that cabin, so they will not register for week one if that cabin's been used. So that URL kind of shows them. It's also nice they can select details. If I had specific details here, they also can see merit badges. What merit badges, um, remaining space, how many people have registered, all that good stuff. If they're happy, they can simply say register and then sign up for that week of camp. So let's talk about lastly here, the re review of group registration functions. So the reason we kind of go back to this is it's very important. The configuration of the program really determines your the user experience for your leaders and you want to make sure that you have a complete understanding of this so that camp registration will be smooth deposits will be all set up correctly merit most important as all boy scout councils know merit badge registration works as smoothly as possible let's be honest you're always going to have phone calls you're always going to have a couple leaders that don't know how to register and get frustrated that's always going to happen you're never going to be able to set up a perfect program where all of your leaders are completely happy and everything works perfect but if you understand the group registration functions, it's going to help as much as possible. So if I come back here and let's go back to edit program and kind of review this page. So again, this is a group sign up program. And the reason we set it up as group sign up is group sign up is specifically built for Boy Scout summer camp and it allows you to control what your leaders see when they come on and register. <laughs> so the first thing you'll see here is limit registration changes. So this allows you to set when and how people can change the number of registrants. So the first thing is can change the number of registrants. So you wanna set that when they first register. So that means that they can come in, they can select their numbers up until capacity settings. The next one is cannot decrease. So a lot of Boy Scout councils wanna lock in their numbers and basically say, if you came on and told us oh, you're signing up five adults and 15 scouts, you can't decrease the number. You can increase it, but you can't decrease it. <clears throat> the next setting is cannot decrease the number of registrants. So that means that you're locked in. You can remove people, but you can't go over the number that you stated when you initially registered. And last is cannot change the number of registrants. So a lot of scout councils will use this setting like a month or two before camp because they want people to use the system all the way up until this date but you really we don't want you changing the number of people because we need those numbers way in advance to order food um, order uh, um, any kind of stuff they need for camp that pertains to the number of people so it's an important setting and you can change this it's dynamic you can change this at any time and that's what it's designed to do so in the beginning you always want to set this to allow them to change, but maybe again, two months before the camp date, maybe you want to say, no, we're locking it in. 
you can go in and update merit badge schedules, you know, change your group info, but you can't change the number of registrants as soon as I set that to that to that setting. <clears throat> registrants in Classid, again, this setting here, I always recommend this to save updated session event selections, even if check checkout is not completed. What that does is that if a leader goes in and signs up a few kids for however many kids for merit badges and they don't complete the registration, it still saves that merit badge schedule. The number one complaint we've had is when do not save is is set is that this will happen a lot because the leaders will go in. They'll build they'll spend 45 minutes building schedules for their kids merit badges and then they'll just close the window because they did the schedule or maybe they don't want to make a payment. So they do the merit patch schedule and they just close the window and we don't save it. So most councils will set this to save updated. Even if checkout is not completed just to save the headache because all this kind of councils know how important those merit badge schedules and merit badge um, merit badges are in general to those leaders. And to avoid the angry phone call, they'll usually just set even if checkout is not completed. <clears throat> we have general instructions for home page. So again, those show up right on the home page and let's start a registration so we can see some of these. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I say register here and I can say, let me fill in my group info. Okay, we have James here. And I'll say James leader. Oops. Okay. Okay, and I'll say continue. So this text right here shows up front and center. So this is important text. So you can, a lot of councils will basically give instructions here. For example, you could give instructions on what you have for this setting. You could say, lock in your number of scouts and adults by, by 5-1 because afterwards you would not be able to do so. That would be a very relevant thing to use on those instructions. You also could say things like register, you know, merit badge registration will begin on March 15th. Things like that. Relevant information you would want your scout leaders to know when they get to this page. So who's coming? This is the page where they can provide you numbers and names of a scouts attending. Now let's get back to that registration group registration page. You actually can control what they can do on this page. So you can say, do you want them to be able to reserve a block, name individuals, or both? The reason we have this is a lot of times, scout councils will start registration for summer camp months in advance, and the scout leaders may not know the names of every scout, at, scout attending. And they really just want them to say, tell us the number of people coming and pay a deposit. So they'll have on the option to reserve a block. Just come in, tell us the numbers, and then pay a deposit. Maybe they then later in the future, they may say, okay, we want to require them to now name individuals. So they'll send out an email to all their scouts, scout leaders registered for camp. And they'll say, okay, scout leaders, we want you to start going in and naming your scout and adult leaders for camp. Please do so by March 15th, because that's the day merit badge registration opens. So they'll come in and set this so that they are requiring, they are requiring leaders to name registrants, to name the actual um, adult leaders and scouts for that camp. Both allows them to reserve a block and name individuals. So it's not required either way. Instructions here, so these instructions actually will show up here so you can build out um, if I say cancel here we have to we have a oh shoot I shouldn't have canceled that let's start that one more time go back in I'm gonna do this one two three and I'll say cancel that one two three one two three 
Now you'll see here, you'll have name scouts and leaders. So on this page here, if I go back to where I built this out, here is where name scouts and leaders show up. Sign up for merit badges. If I go back here, you'll see sign up for merit badges. So that text controls what they see here. So you can really customize those pages. So who's coming? What are they doing? Reserve facility and group forms. So for the activity sign up, this is really the most important part of Boy Scout summer camp because this is the merit badge sign up. This is the reason you're using a program because you've built session events. So there's a couple, this really important thing, last thing we want to talk about here is really this important of how do I open camp registration for merit badges. So a lot of councils will uncheck this box here. So the scout leaders won't even see the option for sign up for merit badges until they go in and manually check that this button. So they'll have a, they'll send out an email on March 15th and say merit badges are now open. They'll come in, check this box, save it, and the leader can go in and they'll see that box to sign up for merit badges. You also can make this completely automatic. So for example, I could have this box always checked right from the get go. And I could put some text in here, sign up for merit badges starting 3-15-2022. And so on that page, they will see that sign up for merit badges 322. So they know even if they click this now, they're not going to see any merit badges until 322. So the, the way you control when merit badges are example is really two ways. And those ways are this checkbox as well as the registration begin date on your session events. So what I mean by that is if I edit a session event, you have a registration begin date right here. So this is the date. So when you're building your session events, if you want the registration begin date to be 315, then you set that here. And so what that means is that merit badges are not available until this date and time. So you could set up your summer camp, you can check that box so that so that this this box appears. But even if they click it, merit badges aren't going to be available until 315. So you control when things display, but you really want to have a game plan before you open anything up. So my my suggestion would be to always have this display, but use these instructions to tell your leaders when this is available. Also, email your leaders and tell them, hey, next week at 315 at 8 a.m. Pacific, merit badges are available for registration. So again, my suggestion would be to make sure on all your session events, you have the correct, correct date set. And then on your edit program view, you have this box checked sign up for merit badges, but in the instructions, you tell them what date it opens. So it's very clear when they go in to actually register that here's signing up for merit badges, but it says it starts 315. And if I click in here, there's nothing available because the badges start 315. That way, everything is automatic. Because if you do it the other way, it, you know, it works just fine, but then you have to remember to come in and actually uncheck that option so the box doesn't show. So my preference would be to leave this checked, but inform them when those actually open. Again, check for scheduling conflicts. You can set this to manual or automatic. You have, um, again, facility selection. So this is where we built our facilities. Again, custom instructions always help. It's nice to have it customized. And then the edit group forms page, that's if you have a form attached and we did uh, attach a form. So that's right here, my group forms. Again, they can manually check for scheduling conflicts or you can set that to automatic. And here's where they can come back and edit their group. So if you allow them here, um, who's coming, sign up for merit badges, choose the cabin, and group forms. So I hope everyone found that helpful in terms of Boy Scouts summer camp. 
Again, we encourage you to watch both of these videos in full. Attempt to build out your camp. It always helps to get into the system, playing around with it, and actually, you know, getting hands on. And then if you have any questions, please contact our support team. Again, if you contact support, just give them all the details possible. What's the program name? This is what I've done. This is the issue I'm running into. Just so they have all the issue uh, issues up front, so they can you know properly review the issue and get back to that information. Again, please review both of these videos, and if you have any questions, contact our support team. Thank you.